to speak to you about some of the important principles that are involved in moving into the paradigm. The excuses be gone paradigm is the promise that I made at the beginning of the show, that there is a step-by-step -step way that you can look within, ask certain questions of yourself, examine them, and move away from using excuses forever. Okay, the first of these principles is called awareness. The ego and awareness cannot coexist together. The ego is a kind of thinking that says that who I am is what I have and what I do and what other people think of me and that I'm separate from everyone else and I'm separate from God and, uh, and I evaluate myself on the basis of this. And many of you grew up with this idea that uh, who you are is what you do, what you accumulate, what other people think of you, your reputation, and so on. Thinking with awareness is thinking from the highest place that there is. It's the kind of thinking that uh, allows excuses to be eradicated from your life. It's the thinking that uh, is talked about in the New Testament. With God, all things are possible. Now you tell me, what does that leave out? What does all things are possible leave out? Nothing, does it? So when you think from a place of awareness, you think in terms of, instead of using one of these excuses that you see popping up right here on these little thought bubbles uh, across the stage, uh, that I can't do it, um, I'm too tired, I'm too old, it's going to be difficult, it's going to take a long time, which is all the ego stuff which promotes these mind viruses and these memes. Instead of that, when you think with awareness, your first thought is, no matter what it is, if you get a cold, you know, if you get, um, you know, if, if you hurt yourself in some way, your first thought isn't, oh, this is something I can't do anything about and I'm going to be hobbled and, and I'm going to... Your first thought is, with God, all things are possible. With Source, all things are possible. It doesn't mean that you're instantly healed and the cold is going to go away, but you set your mind on a new way of looking at virtually anything that comes into your life. All things are possible. And getting to that place in your life is, is one of the most beautiful things that you can experience. And I try to practice this over and over again, whatever it might be, whether it's a, a family crisis, whether it's a financial crisis, whatever it may be, instead of saying that with the economy and it's going to turn down and terrible things are going to happen and I'm going to lose my job, you know, you instantly, you have a thought, an affirmation within you that says, I can handle this. I am not alone. I can make myself get through this. Uh, uh, I have the solution is going to be out there. I may not know what it is, but my thoughts are always on it's possible. So that's the first of these principles. The second of these principles is something that I call uh, alignment. Hear this and hear this well. All excuses are misalignments. And when I say misalignment, I mean you're misaligned from your source. You came into this world from this perfect, this beautiful place. I have a wonderful paraphrase of a quote by uh, T.S. Eliot. He said, we, we shall not cease from exploration. And at the end of all of our exploring, we'll be to return to the place from which we originated and to know it for the first time. He was talking about death, I think. I'm saying, why should we have to die in order to get to that place? To know, to really know our source. I quoted it many times of Albert Einstein when he was asked a question about, about quantum physics or something. Uh, again, it's a paraphrase. He said, um, I, all of that are just details. He said, I just want to learn to think like God thinks. That's really what alignment means. You think like the source thinks. And if you get to that place, you have to understand that whatever the creative source in the universe is, whether you call it the Tao or God or source or you know, divine mind, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't need any excuses, does it? It doesn't ever say, well, I'd really like to create some uh, rose bushes here, but I'm too busy. <laughs> you know, I'm, my hands are tied. I just can't, I can't get to that right now. You know, I, I'm a little old. I've been doing this for a long time. You know, it's like, 
You know, I'm tired. I'm tired. That's all I ever do. You know, it's like just it, it doesn't do that. It just it just allows. It just allows. That's how you want to think. And every excuse that you saw coming up in these thought bubbles out there is really just a misalignment. You want to move to that. A third principle is called contemplation. Aristotle had a wonderful quote. He said, contemplation is the highest form of activity. That what you think about isn't just a thought that pops into your mind, but that when you think from a contemplative point of view about what it is that you would like to create, you aren't just having a, a passive thought. What you're doing is putting into practice an action. It's a verb, contemplation. It's a verb. It's a way of acting. And I brought with me here tonight a few points written by a great man who lived in the early part of the last century. His name was Thomas Troward. And he was one of the authors of uh, How to Deal with the, the Science of, of Mental Health. He listed the specifics of what happens when you contemplate in a certain way. And I'd like, you to, I'd like to share it with you here. These are the steps of contemplation. Now listen to these. I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to spell them out one by one. First, number one, contemplation is the continual use of your thought process. That's what it is. Your thoughts, number two, your thoughts are actually like things that act to begin the process of materialization. They begin this process of attracting into your life what you want. If you contemplate with thoughts that match originating spirit, using his words, you have the same power as originating spirit. You got to really hear that. If you contemplate with thoughts that match originating spirit, that is, if you think like God thinks, like source thinks, like that which creates everything, then you have the same power as the source. When contemplation is a match to originating spirit, you gain the cooperation of divine mind, attracting and fulfilling your desires. But our thoughts can never be on these excuses. You can't use them. Contemplation is therefore, according to Troward, a kind of action in and of itself which sets into motion all of the creative forces of the universe. That is, as you begin to contemplate from a perspective of all things are possible and I can create what I want for myself in your life, you set into motion the creative forces that are operating in the universe.